All right, everybody, I'm going to get started. Uh, welcome to Scrum and Wine. We are celebrating our four year anniversary. So thanks to everybody who's attended before. For everybody who's new, welcome. And so glad to have you part of our community and our membership. So, so glad to have you here. We're recording uh, today's event. Uh, we'll record the uh, kind of the presentation and the breakout and the activity session. So we'll record that. And when we jump into Lean Coffee, uh, after that, we'll turn off the recording because that's when we just, uh, we really get to kind of explore whatever we want to talk about kind of that open space type concept. So let's take a little bit, uh, look at small bites. I always kind of like to put together, uh, at least the last few months I've been doing this, putting together something called small bites, just kind of exploring what's happening in the community. So one thing that's upcoming uh, that I do want to shout out, because I think this is pretty interesting. I joined it last year. There's what's called an Agile Virtual Summit. Uh, so as soon as we hit the pandemic last year, all of our global scrum gatherings and all of our Agile conferences, they all got shut down. And almost all of them are still shut down here in 2021. Uh, so while we can get back together in person, most of them are looking at this as like, it's still pretty hard to get 2000 people together. Um, the comfort, the logistics of that, uh, making that commitment, we, there's still too many unknowns and risks. So pretty much 2021, I've seen everybody said, nope, we're gonna stay virtual this year and we'll look at 2022 to get back to those regular conferences. In doing so, there's been uh, some amazing people in the community uh, that I've got a chance to meet, um, and they put together this Agile Virtual Summit. I joined it last year. It's a five-day summit. There's a few hours each day, um, and it's free. You can come join. There's really cool speakers that you, uh, you do. Some of these names you might recognize if, you, if you're involved in the community, and, uh, and they'll be having different topics and talks, and you can decide what to join or what not to join. Uh, it's all virtual. So I would uh, suggest joining that, actualvirtualsummit.com, uh, if you want to do that. So big shout out to them and to all those people that contributed and put that together. Another cool thing, this one's kind of near and dear and passionate uh, to me. Uh, a lot of our uh, Scrum developer educators, which I am one of, uh, we put together a new program for the Scrum developer community, the developers on a Scrum team. Uh, it's part of uh, Scrum Alliance, one of the tracks we've had, but it's been kind of hard to serve those members as well as we would have liked to. Uh, I've been running this training program for also about four years or so, and, uh, and we get a handful of people every time we run it, and people get really cool insights. We look at a lot of the extreme programming practices, such as test-driven development, uh, peer programming, refactoring, um, and a lot of other practices such as, you know, the CI, CD, and of course, you know, how to use Scrum to be a member of a Scrum team. So this is now rewritten. Scrum Alliance just did an email blast a few days ago that we now have a track similar to the Scrum Master and the product owner tracks. There's the Scrum Developer. It's now a two-day course uh, that came up, which is pretty cool. And you don't have to have programming experience to be a member of that now. So if you're just a member of a Scrum team or you want to know what it's like to be on a Scrum team, maybe you're a Scrum Master product owner. What is it like for a developer? That class is awesome for you. Uh, when we host that, our programming is extremely uh, scenario-based and situational-based. So you don't have to have programming skills uh, to go through that and feel what it's like. So big shout out for them for doing that. Um, and what's that course like? Uh, so like I said, we got the two certifications right now, Scrum Developer and Advanced Certified Scrum Developer. So don't miss it. And Ivan and I, we co-train that. We've been co-training this for years. And we have three upcoming classes uh, that we've posted now for the Scrum Developer. So, so we want to let you guys know that that's going on. I've got one that's starting next week. And Ivan and I are going with an experiment that's worked pretty well before, where we're doing just three hours a day for four straight days. Uh, we have found based, especially in the virtual, that this has been very good for people because it allows them to have their regular job but still they can find three hours each day and really get all these deep learnings. So we set that up and we set up two different time zones to appreciate people around the globe. Uh, we've got the one next week from three to 6 p.m. And uh, that'll be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And these are Pacific times. And then we set up one in June where it's gonna be the morning hours, Pacific times, the seven to 10 a.m. So that handles Europe pretty well. So if you're, if you're in Europe or you've got friends in Europe and you wanna shout it out to them and say, hey, this is just an evening for you. Three hours a night, you can really learn what it's like. So, so we'll be doing that. Uh, next week's one is on regular price and the one in June and July are still in early bird pricing. Also, you guys as a member of Scrum and Wine, you get a 10% uh, coupon code. 
any training we have, you always have that code. We keep that open. So if uh, any classes that you see that you want to join through Scrum Adventures, uh, use uh, code Scrum and Wine when you do checkout. These classes you can find at scrumadventures.com and, uh, and you can look for them there and we have the new CSD under training. So you'll see it there if those are interesting to you. And you can reach out to uh, Griffin or I if you got questions here, um, even in chat. So if you wanted to reach out to Griffin while I talk and ask questions, he'll, uh, he'll engage in a chat with you and help you out there. In addition to that, uh, for those of you who joined before, we have launched a whole bunch of programs that are free to you that you can download. A lot of really cool things that can help you on your team. So I want to let you know those are available and that's uh, kodomi.co and you can find those in uh, programs. Uh, I wanted to uh, shout out one of them that's kind of aligns with what we're going to go to today. So we're going to be looking about a lot about sprint, sprint capacity planning. How do we know we're ready for our sprints? Uh, and one of the programs we have kind of matches that pretty well, which is your agile sprint health. When we're delivering the sprint, we want to know how healthy we are. Uh, so this is a guideline that teams can use to look at and say, are our sprints healthy? What should we be doing to make sure we're healthy? Uh, so this is a free download and you can use this as part of your, your programs. And I did uh, pop out one of the pages here I thought was interesting, uh, which is uh, about team capacity. And you'll be learning about that today. But that's something always to ask. Because um, I've seen a lot of teams that they're always trying to pull the same amount of work each time, but they've got two members on vacation. Doesn't mean we can really do the same work. So that's what capacity is about. So that program's available for you. You can check that out on kodomi.co or scrumadventures.com, and I gave you the full URL there. All right, today's event, we're going to be looking at sprint capacity planning. How do we take capacity, basically all the availability of a team, and how do we match that with what we've delivered before, which we'll talk about is known as yesterday's weather, uh, in order to look at future velocity. How do we predict how much we can do? How can we improve our confidence? So we're going to explore that. So let's uh, let's jump over, move from uh, small bites. So thanks for going through that. And let's jump into the presentation. All right, sprint readiness. So this is all about being ready for a sprint. Let's get our teams ready. A lot of times they're jumping in and there's just so many unknowns and we're a little bit wrong. So Three things we'll look at, capacity, yesterday's weather, and velocity. Okay, what is our goal? So we're running this as a little bit of a workshop. You guys are gonna break out into different rooms uh, and you'll be have a chance to actually do some of these things and use our new tools. So, so it should be a lot of fun and engaging and energizing and laughing. Hopefully you'll do that too. So workshop goal, improve the accuracy of the planned commitment, which the developers on the Scrum team estimate for pulling their work in to an upcoming sprint. So we wanna make that better. We wanna make them feel more confident about that, improve their consistency, make sure they can actually commit and deliver towards their sprint goal and produce increments all the time, find their own way. So that's our goal. Let's take a look at what that's like. Uh, we're gonna start with an icebreaker. Uh, we're gonna figure out what is your current team's commitment? What is that like right now? So let me show you how that's gonna work. So we're going to use uh, we're going to use our mural tool to do this. So I'm going to give you guys a code here real quick in chat, and come join our mural board. I got to get my chat open. There it is. Okay, in chat, you now have a link. Please join that mural. It's free to join. Um, you don't even have to sign up as a member. Everybody's a guest. You'll end up being some type of visiting animal if you haven't been on mural before. You can put your name there or just be that animal of your choice. Okay, watching my screen. So we're going to do this icebreaker. I'm not going to go through all the aspects of the board yet, but we got an icebreaker up here. So if you want to look at my screen, awesome. As you join, I'm going to summon everybody to follow me. So you can kind of come over here and see it if you're looking at your screen. So what you're going to do here is you're going to grab a post-it. If it's your first time on Mural, you're going to open this left-hand navigation, click on text, and in text you have all these different types of post-its. Grab one of your desire. You can put it over here to start with, and you're going to drag it to one of these columns. So I want you to think, how does your team currently make commitments? 
All right, what do you do today? How do you figure that out? What happens if your team is over or under commits? So if we commit to 50 things and we all do only deliver 30 or we commit to 30 and we deliver 50, what happens? And what would you do to help your team make better commitments? So you're gonna explore that and you're gonna do that in breakout rooms. So you can add post-it notes uh, individually and discuss them with your team. So let's get you guys in different rooms here and we're just gonna do five minutes on that timer. So let me open up the breakout rooms. And let's do, let's do, let's see, let's do, let's do five, how many people we got here, 23. Let's do five breakout rooms here. Okay, and discuss with your groups. And let me put the time here. All right, and rooms are open. So go ahead and join with your group and enjoy the board. See you back here. Welcome back, everybody. Always, Sorry, the, <laughs> always the favorite thing about Zoom. It's like, wait, no, we're still talking, chatting. Almost always happens. Exactly. Uh, I know. Always it's happens. like real life, though, the way people like sometimes uh, grab you by the scruff of your neck and drag you to another meeting. <laughs> that kind of sounds like harassment. I hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> but we have been booted out of conference rooms before. You know, get out. I got the room. You guys are done. Right, or somebody's hovering there. So, so it happens in a different way. All right, uh, any interesting insights when you answered uh, those questions here? How does your team currently make commitments? What happens if a team is over or under? And what might you uh, do to help your team make better commitments? Uh, uh, who wants to start? Who wants to kind of share what was uh, interesting as they looked at those three questions? So mine is not on there, I think, because I wasn't able to write cards. So mine is that we don't do a planning. We, um, our whole department is not allowed to do estimates. Product managers are expected to make estimates the best they know how, but they're not allowed to ever ask engineers or engineering department for estimates. So there's uh, actually, as engineers, we, we, don't do, uh, we don't do planning in that way. We don't measure our velocity or do planning at all. Yeah. That's a good share, Fred. I, lo I love that you, you state that, um, you know, kind of open and honestly, because when I hear that, my first thought is, okay, the people building the product, they don't really have any confidence or commitment because somebody else kind of told them what their estimate is. And it's like, I didn't make that. If I meet the goal, fine. If I don't, that's fine. I'm just going to do my best job. So there's, you know, so I feel there's a lot of opportunity, basically. I'll just say it that way. <laughs> Lots of opportunities. Hopefully you'll learn a few uh, tricks that maybe you can take away today, too. So good share. Yeah. Someone else. So Joshi, Joshi and I, Genevieve, um, Joshi and I really didn't get into the second columns. We just did the first one. Um, and then just we talked about problems really. Um, but we both agreed on looking back at your historical data for the team velocity um, and then just communication, making sure that there's open communication with the scrum master, having private conversations to kind of draw out information with people being away or things like that and then kind of posing that to the group when you're doing planning or you're going through and putting points to, to your story. So kind of ask, ask people because you're not a manager of them. So you really don't have access to the capacity that they have. So that was one of the things that we, that we kind of talked about. Awesome, thanks Genevieve. Let's do one more. Who else has a, a share they'd like to do? I would. Um, I, I jokingly said nothing and then that ended up as opposed to which I thought was funny because sometimes we don't do anything what happens if the team is over under commits which happens quite frequently with us. Right. Um, but there are projects that we do have uh, clients and deadlines and on those we either end up revising the schedule for delivery um, or we reduce the scope and we do that weekly. Um, so that we can make sure that everybody is informed, both the clients and all the people working on the projects. Okay, great. Thanks, Bonnie. 
All right. Uh, so let's take a look at what we're gonna what we're gonna learn in our in our time together here today. So we're gonna learn about capacity. Um, so what is capacity? The availability. So you know what what's our team? Who's available as part of our sprint? So we want to know that. So what's the capacity? Anybody on vacation? Are they out of office? Are they in a training class? So we want to know that. What's the availability of all the team members? And another cool thing that uh, I don't hear asked about a lot, so I really want to make sure this was included, is allocation. So maybe, you know, I'm fully available this week, but you know what? I'm part of two teams. Uh, while it's not ideal, I might be on two teams. That might be reality. So my availability is, yeah, I'm here all week, but I'm only allocated at 50%. So that would imply I've only got 20 hours really of capacity for this week. So really like to look at that as capacity, we'll explore that. Uh, we have something called yesterday's weather. It's kind of a look back. Uh, and the way we look, we use yesterday's weather is we're looking back at the last three sprints. What, what did we deliver in the past? Uh, so we like to look at those kind of couple inputs, the availability and that capacity. And we look at those last three sprints to help us make a projection. So we'll explore yesterday's weather in this, um, in our learning objectives. And that helps us get towards the velocity. How many points, if we're using story points, how many points did we deliver in the past? Uh, and we also look at a couple other things. These are kind of neat that I don't think uh, teams make enough investment in. They're making an investment in their own team practices. What's their continuous improvement? Uh, we call that Kaizen, Japanese term, which really kind of uh, loosely translate to continuous improvement. So what's their Kaizen or action item that they're going to do to improve? We need to bring that in too, make that investment. And interrupts. Things often happen in our teams that we did not plan for. So we want to be able to know what those are so we can say, are we getting a right amount of interrupts? Is there too much, too little? Because um, that might happen on a team and they're different on the teams. But if we start to look at that, we can plan better for it. And ultimately that leads us to readiness. So we're going to look at readiness. What is our plan commitment? Improve that confidence. We know how much work to pull into a sprint. Uh, so that way we can actually right size it and we can work at a sustainable pace. Uh, make that visible and transparent. So let's take a look at capacity. Let's start with that. Can we look at capacity? Like I said, the first thing you wanna look at is determining your availability. So again, how many days are you available? So those holidays, vacations, training, all those different things, um, round to about a half day kind of a best practice. You know, I don't want to know that somebody's going to be gone for a, for a half hour where they're going to, you know, they got to run and they got to drive somebody for an errand. So about a half day availability is fine. So round to that. And then again, we want to look at that allocation. So where else are you committed? So again, you're fully 40 hours. You're, you're working 40 hours. You're billing. You're writing a time card, whatever you might be doing. Either way, you're 40 hours on the job. But what are you allocated to? I'm on the scrum team for, you know, 25% of the time. I'm over there doing um, some analytics research uh, for part of the time. And uh, what else is going on? So we want to know that. So I might only be allocated 25%. Um, what, is, what is known there? And that'll help us calculate our capacity. So calculating the capacity, it's allocation as a percent of your availability. Um, and that's an important thing to consider. So we really do know how much do we have available going forward. Take a look at team capacity. Uh, let's take a look at a scenario here first. So let's say we've got somebody with a personal appointment and they're fully allocated. So we'll take an example here. We got one week sprint that ends May 14th. Um, this is for Griffin, so wave by Griffin. So Griffin is taking a half day off for personal reasons. So cool for Griffin, good for you. I'm available for the full sprint. So if we take Griffin and Sherman, we're fully allocated for this team. Our total team capacity would be nine and a half days. All right, we're both fully fully uh, allocated, but Griffin's available four and a half days because he's taking that half day off. Uh, so we've got two tools we're going to introduce you to. Uh, both are free and available, and you're gonna you're gonna actually get to use those. So Fred, this might be good for you. The first one because it's a mobile tool. So we're going to take a look at the Scrum Adventures toolbox. Yay. One of the things in there is this capacity calculator. Uh, this capacity calculator will help you figure out how do we know our capacity. Uh, we can enter all the team members. I've got a little uh, demo here that we put together. So you would download this on your uh, um, Android uh, Play Store or the Google uh, Google app. Um, I got those. So 
Apple Play, Apple Play Store, Apple App Store. Remember the names of it, Apple App Store and the Google Play Store. So you can download it from either as you'll get Scrum Adventures Toolbox as the name of it. Make sure you get Scrum Adventures Toolbox. We have another app out there too, but you'll want that Scrum Adventures Toolbox. You'll download that. And let me, uh, let me just walk you through how this works. So you get that app, you open it up, and there's a bunch of tools in there that you can use. We're gonna take a look at this capacity calculator. It's the first one. You open that, you click the plus, add the first name. We get Griffin up there. Uh, Griffin said he's working 36 hours, four and a half days, and he's 100% available. Great, now let's add uh, Sherman in there. So we'll add Sherman in there, I've got 40 hours, and I'm also 100% allocated. So we'll put that in there, and then we click Calculate Capacity. So between both Griffin and myself, for this uh, sprint, we have 76 hours of, of uh, capacity available. Um, if our allocation was different, we can change that. Maybe I was only available 50% of the time then I can put 40 hours at 50% um, or even different things. Maybe I'm only working uh, three and a half days. Maybe I take Fridays, I only work half day Fridays. So I'd wanna be able to put uh, 36 hours at uh, 50%. So I can put 36 and 50. Um, sometimes I can calculate that in my head, 18, that's not too hard. Um, but it's nice when you can enter everybody as the team and figure out and know what they are. Once you have that available, uh, using your Scrum Ventures toolbox with the capacity calculator, you then get to open up a web-based app that we built that is responsive, so you can use it on any device. Um, it's called Sprint Capacity Planner, and uh, Griffin's going to give you a full uh, full walkthrough here in a moment. Uh, but basically, we took that 76, and in this case, um, our example here, we were looking at days. So I took that 76 hours, and just I just divided it by eight, and I came up with this uh, this entry I put down here, which is, hey, for this sprint, this upcoming sprint, the team has nine and a half days of capacity available. And I put the start and the end date for the sprint. Starts May 10th on the Monday, and we're gonna end here on a Friday, May 14th. So that's all I did just to show that's how that entry went about. Okay, Griffin's gonna give you guys a full demo on that sprint capacity planner. Oh, we got a hand raise, so let's go for that. Uh, Genevieve, you got a question. This is just me being um, picky, but would we be also taking off lunch breaks from that capacity? Uh, you no, know, that would be up to you and your team. What's your practices? I, I like that question though. Uh, one thing we, you know, I haven't brought up here in this particular thing, but if you have a working agreement for your team and I'm a big fan of working agreements, um, as long as we all agree, that's all that really matter, matters is we're all using the same thing. If we all agree we're gonna do seven hour days, that's fine. Then seven hours is, you know, when we say somebody's fully available, fully available means seven instead of eight. That's awesome. And then we can say somebody's on two teams. So that person is seven hours, but they're 50% available. The tool will calculate it for you. It'll just take 50% of whatever number you enter in there. So if that's a practice that works for you and your team, we just want everybody to do it the same. It so, gives you a little padding for like time for email or time for meetings or something. Absolutely. Yeah. So I said, that's awesome, Kathy. Yeah. Whatever. As long as we're all doing the same thing, that's great. I know a lot of teams and different cultures around the globe uh, do that type of thing too, where they say, no, we're only 37 hours available. That's our max or whatever it is. So, so whatever that max is for you, that's great. Good questions. Good exploration. Okay, let me uh, turn it over to Griffin. I'm going to stop sharing. Griffin's going to share. He's going to bring up uh, our new Sprint Capacity Planner. First time you guys are seeing it, and you'll get to use it too. And he's going to give you a, a full walkthrough of the product. So Griffin uh, Griffin joined Scrum Adventures as our Director of Engineering. I'm so happy to have him on board, and he's done some amazing stuff for us. So if you guys have technical questions with him too during uh, Lean Coffee and Breakout, I'm sure he'd be happy to share that type of stuff later too. So Griffin, over to you. Thank you, Sherman. I'm going to go ahead and take over the screen here. Well, welcome everyone. It's amazing to see so many new faces. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and send out a link in the chat here. Feel free to load the web app itself. Um, so when you load the web app here, you're going to be prompted with the uh, Sprint Capacity Planner login page. So currently we're not members. So we're going ahead and we're gonna click not a member and you're gonna be prompted with the register page. So we just ask you enter in your first name, your last name, an email, 
as well as a password here. Currently, we do not have a forgot my password um, process. So just in the meantime, if you want to take, down, take it down on a note, whether it's on a post-it, on your laptop or on your phone, feel free to do that. And once you sign up, you're going to be prompted with this uh, Sprint Capacity Planner uh, web page. You'll notice we have three separate columns here. We have a track column, we have a calculate column, and we have an estimate column. The left-hand side track deals with mostly team capacity. This is where you'll be able to enter your team's capacity uh, with an optional addition of entering your sprint start and end date. This will allow you to track when you guys started something just so you can look back at it in the future. Uh, in the middle column, this is the calculate column where it is currently blocked. Uh, we, may ha we have made it a minimum requirement where for now this sprint and your, your prior sprint, so your last sprint, um, you have those two team capacities available. So we can at least get a basic estimate of what your future velocity is. Um, and then the right-hand side, which is estimate, um, which will produce the results. So let's say we are doing a two-week sprint here. Um, so our last sprint was 34 days of team capacity. And for this sprint, we have 43.75 um, days of capacity. Once you go ahead and enter that information, you'll notice that the calculate section is unlocked. Um, and so you have the ability to enter your Kaizen points, your interrupt points, in addition to your increment points. Um, but let's say we're just doing in increment of points. So right now we're gonna go ahead and press 50 and submit it. And then you'll notice in the right-hand side that we um, are producing 64 increment points but that doesn't mean you can't go back and enter any new information. Uh, you're never gonna plan on an interrupt. So let's say uh, two points of interrupt comes in as well. You can go ahead and come back and resubmit to uh, two interrupt points. And then in addition to that, you can go ahead and use this new feature we have located at the add, uh, add new sprint. So let's say we just finished uh, this sprint. You can go ahead and click add new sprint which would ideally shift that sprint down one. So you can go ahead and put down 43.75 for your last team's capacity and enter your new capacity. Let's just say it's 30 points. So you have the ability to interchangeably go back and forth and update how many points you guys have completed. And if any new things have come up, you're more than welcome to come back and resubmit it. That is it from me, and I'll pass it back over to Sherman. You're on mute, Sherman. Thanks, Griffin. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. All right, so that's an overview. So you guys are going to get to explore that. So you guys are going to go into a breakout, and you're actually going to calculate the capacity. Um, and Vipani, I'll get to your question in a moment. I'm going to show people and then I'll let you uh, ask that question. So you're going to calculate capacity. Uh, we'll give you guys 10 minutes of breakout. Um, and uh, let, me, uh, let me show you what that looks like on the mural. So I'm going to zoom way out on the mural. When you come to the mural here, so like I said, if you're new to mural, uh, there's some features here to get to know. Uh, but basically what you're going to look at is here, I've broken into 10 teams. We're going to use, uh, use those four teams. Team one will be pink, team two is blue, team three is green, team four will be uh, orange. So we'll have that right there. If you need help navigating, there's this cool feature called an outline. Um, and that is available on the top menu. So if you wanted to find that outline, you can always open up outline. And if, I want, if I'm on the pink team, for example, I can click number six here, team one pink, and that can help me refind myself. There's also a map in the bottom of your Zoom. You can do that to zoom in and zoom out or use your scroll wheel, which is what I tend to favor. You're gonna do this first activity though. We're just gonna do two activities here. Um, this first activity here is all about tracking team capacity. So you're gonna get to use both tools. Uh, we got some instructions here. Basically, it's nice to kind of have two people act as scribes, uh, one using the mobile phone app and one using the web-based uh, app. Uh, so we'll have that there. And, uh, and you're gonna follow the scenario. So we got a scenario over here that you can follow once you have those apps open. And we basically uh, set up a few sprints here for you. 
And within each sprint, uh, we mentioned uh, kind of for simplicity, everybody's allocated 100%, so you can do that. And we got some uh, names here you can enter here and their availability. So example, Kelly was available eight days over this period of time, while uh, Nika, Kirk, Akash, Vivek were available five, Hutch was available two, and I was available four. So you would enter that into the, uh, the mobile um, app to figure out, okay, how many, uh, how many hours were available or how many days were available? So you'll enter that into, into the mobile app. Once you get that information, you can actually enter that into the Sprint Capacity Planner as a total. You calculate the total based on the team members. So you'll enter that in here. You can put it into, uh, put it into the right sprint. Uh, you'll notice these sprints have dates. So these are sprint two week sprints ending on 49, 423, and 57, along with 521. 521 will kind of be uh, the future sprint. So that's where we get four. So if you're looking at 49, you're kind of looking at this oldest one, for example. So you'll be what we call the sprint before even that one. So that's where you would enter those those uh, that numbers that you calculate. And your sprint end date is 49. You can put the sprint start date if you want, which would be two weeks earlier. So you're going to enter that. Show us some pictures, show us how you did it, and give us some of your notes here. Uh, we're just doing the capacity for now, and you'll put the answers. What was the capacity for each one of those sprints that ended? All right, let's go to Vipani's question and see if we answered that or if I can help answer that. So Vipani, over to you. Uh, just one clarification question. So in the middle call, column. Well, I guess we're not there yet. So I guess that we'll get to that for the next exercise and regarding the velocity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you want to, yeah, if you want to hang, because we're going to do that as uh, the activity after this one. So if you want to. Okay, uh, sounds good. Uh, yeah, see if. That... I'll just hold off then. Okay, awesome. Anybody have any questions about uh, getting this activity done? Otherwise, we'll send you to your, your breakout rooms. You'll get 10 minutes there. Griffin and I will, uh, We'll uh, join those. So if you guys need uh, need help navigating through the the tools or clarity and clarification, so we'll jump into the breakout rooms and help you guys out. Everybody's coming back. Uh, based on the few rooms I joined, you probably wanted a little bit more time, new tools to figure things out, and uh, and it's okay if you didn't get to figure it all out. But uh, hopefully, you're starting to feel how am I getting the capacity in. We're gonna build on that. So when we do the next breakout, I'm gonna do it a little bit different. I'm not gonna automatically close the breakout rooms. Um, this is a feature of Zoom that I do find uh, would be nice to advance. Once you set Zoom breakout and you give it a time, you can't adjust it while it's in the breakout room, which makes no sense. It's like, we want more time, but it doesn't let you. Um, so if I don't set it to an actual time, then we can, uh, we can just do it manually instead of automatically. So I'll do that for the next breakout because you will want to calculate all capacities. All right, um, I'm going to go back to uh, presentation for a little bit and, uh, and then we'll come back for questions before we hit the next breakout. Okay, so that was the scenario of looking at capacity. As we kind of move forward, um, we're going to start looking at that second column, which is really about yesterday's weather. What have we delivered in the past? So we want to be able to understand that a little bit more. Um, so we kind of look at a couple things, that capacity, the availability and the team capacity, so availability allocation to get the capacity. And then a new thing we look at is we look at the last sprints, uh, up to three. Uh, when Griffin demonstrated, he showed, hey, we really only need the last sprint, just one sprint uh, to calculate future uh, velocity, uh, which is great. So if you're a brand new team and you have at least one sprint, great, you can still create some type of prediction. If we look at our last three sprints though, we get a little bit a uh, little bit more accurate. So our last three sprints help us get a higher confidence interval. So that's what we use when we use yesterday's weather. So we'll look at those last three sprints to calculate our velocity. And we do that based on team member days. We've got an interesting calculation behind the scenes. This is why we need capacity and the velocity because we're trying to say on a team member days or even hours, how much is delivered so we can be more predictive. Um, because I've seen so many teams where they just say, hey, we've been delivering about 50 points, and so we should deliver about 50 points going forward. But if they're not looking at the changes in capacity from sprint to sprint, then we're missing that. So that's what we bring into this calculation. And we do that to make a projection. What is it gonna look like going forward? 
So kind of talk about that. So yeah, so we take team capacity, look back, project forward. So those are the kind of three things. How much is delivered? What can we do? So those are three things. This is all for the developers on the Scrum team. They're the ones that have to make this commitment and feel confidence about that. So as we look at our sprint capacity planner here, so let's look back at those three sprints, ending May 7th, April 30th, and April 23rd. What was the team capacity for the last three sprints? So if we look, uh, let's say at our last sprint, our last sprint, the team had a capacity of eight days and it was a one week, five, three to five, seven. The sprint before that, they had the capacity of 10 days and 426 to 423. And the sprint before even that one was eight days, 419 to 423. So you can see your last three sprints. And then this sprint, which is really our future sprint, this is what we want to be able to figure out how much can we get done. We have nine and a half days of uh, capacity, 510 to 514. So that's how we look back at that last three sprints. And now we go ahead and we take a look at, well, what about yesterday's weather? How much did we deliver in those sprints? So in that last sprint, we delivered 23 points of increment. So 23 points of product is what we delivered. We didn't do any, uh, we'll look at Kaizen and interrupt in a minute, but right now just focus on the interrupt. So we delivered 23 points over that eight days of capacity. The sprint before that one, the sprint before last, we delivered 27 points out of that 10 days of capacity. And the sprint before even that one, we delivered 20 points out of eight days of capacity. So once we have that available, we can do a calculation. Okay, let's look at that velocity, bringing that in. So this is where we can kind of look at the yesterday's weather velocity, the increment, but I really love when teams invest in themselves. How can we be better as a team? That's the continuous improvement. That's what we're really looking for. What Kaizen action items? If we're not investing in ourselves, we're gonna get slower and slower over time. Um, I'm kind of a sports fan, so I love looking at sports analogy. Uh, right now it's you know just about NBA playoffs, so that's kind of what's been on my mind a lot. So any of you who are basketball fans, NBA fans, um, if we look at our teams, and our teams are just like, yeah, we score about 100, you know, 105 points a game. So we should continue to score 105 points a game. Um, but if we're not investing it, what do we need to do different? How do we get to, uh, how do we get more done? How do we make sure we can be more efficient, more effective, uh, score earlier, score more often, or hold the opponent? So we need to find those improvements. What can we do? That's continuous improvement. That's our Kaizen. That's our action item. Oh, wow. Thanks. Yeah, interrupts, we can look at interrupts also. So when we've got interrupts going on, what happens during our sprint that we didn't plan for? We wanna be able to track that. We might've committed to do this increment for our product, but something happened. So we wanna pull that into. So let's take a look at those three. What are those definitions? Increment velocity, this is what we delivered that advances our product. Kaizen action items, investing in ourselves and the interrupt. So based on yesterday's weather average, we'll look at that and say, how much is happening to interrupt? And we can interrupt. then be predictive on interrupt too and try new things. If we're getting a lot of interrupt, we can say, what can we do to reduce that interrupt? What's in our way? So now we can have deeper conversations too. So we went ahead and took look a, looked at this already, our capacity in yesterday's weather with the increment. Now let's add some Kaizen and an interrupt to that. So if we add the Kaizen, we did eight points of Kaizen in that last sprint. Nice job, team invested quite a bit in themselves. Uh, they didn't have any interrupts and they delivered 15 points of uh, increment product. Sprint before last one, they had three Kaizen points that they committed to do. One point of interrupt and they delivered 23 points of interrupt uh, increment. Sprint before even that one, they invested five points of Kaizen no points of interrupt, but 15 points of increment. So that's how they came about to that. So pretty interesting to look at there. Once we have all that, we can click this, calculate your team's velocity. We can get to the estimate, the team class velocity to make a projection. So we've got our capacity, the 9.5, that came from now this sprint. So that's our future sprint. We give nine and a half days of capacity. And based on all this yesterday's weather, we should invest six points of Kaizen. 
zero points of interrupt. We really haven't had much interrupt. If you take that, we only have one point of interrupt over the last three sprints. So that's going to calculate out and round way down to zero. Our increment, though, we should be able to pull 19 points of increment into our sprint plan. So when we're doing our sprint planning event, our product owner says, hey, I need you guys to do all this. You can say, hey, based on our, you know, on our capacity and based on what we've been able to do, we can pull in 19 points. What are the top 19 points you'd like us to pull in, product owner? How does that align to the sprint goal? We can get that confidence and clarity. That's what we're trying to get to. That brings us to the readiness. So again, that commitment, what is our capacity? Yesterday's weather velocity, pull all three of those together. And now we pull the work, it guides the team. They can pull it in. Be very visible and transparent. Let everybody know, hey, we committed to 19 points of increment and we're investing in ourselves with six points of Kaizen. We've left a buffer of three points of interrupt based on our history, great. Share that, let people know so we can see what's going on. All right, you guys now get to do the readiness. So you're gonna advance this and take what you entered in, Kaizen, in capacity, bring in the yesterday's weather, ultimately to figure out how much can we get done. So let's go ahead and take a look at a, a scenario here. Um, if you haven't finished capacity, you guys can finish that. I said, I'll leave this kind of open. So we'll do that. And you'll have this next activity. So you'll slide to the right. So take your capacity that's already entered. And we now have uh, same thing. You only need uh, really one scribe here. We won't need our capacity planner anymore uh, from our mobile app. So we'll be able to just use the sprint capacity planner and not the tool, the Scrum Adventures toolbox anymore. The three sprints, and we gave you a Kazan interrupt and an increment. So you'll just be entering those into the second column for the 4.9, 4.23, and 5.7 sprints. Once you get all that entered, you'll have a button that'll pop up that you can click to do calculate. And we got some things you can answer here. What is your Kazan, your interrupt, and your increment? And then what's the total for all three of those? And if you got some place, you can put some images there to show off a little bit. Uh, we got a hand up, Vipani. Uh, I just had a quick clarification for the yesterday's weather for the points, like the Kaizen and, and the interrupts. Yes. Typically, is that going to be like the same denomination of which you, you've used for the capacity? So, for instance, if you're using hours, then the interrupt will be in, in the hour, hour fashion and days, vice versa with days, or how, what are the points usually typically equate to? Yeah, so points, um, if you haven't been introduced into uh, points, so basically we're talking points, we're really talking about um, uh, using a Fibonacci sequence to help us estimate. Uh, so instead of using hours of work that we do, we cr try to look at really points that we can do. So something that gets our mind away of thinking of hours of work. Uh, if we use hours of work, I got a five person team and they each work 40 hours. I know I have 200 hours of work to do. Uh, when we look at points, we want to say, out of all the items in our backlog, we estimate those based on points. This one is a five-point backlog item. This one is a 13-point backlog item. This one's a 20. This one's a two. Um, our Fibonacci sequence is basically the sum of the previous two numbers to equal the next. One and two is a three. Two and three is a five. Three and five is an eight. Uh, eight and five is 13, and so on. Um, so by using those, those points, uh, which is a practice a lot of people do, um, but there's a lot of other ways, but by using those points, we kind of free our mind to just say that's what's called relative sizing. So we just look and then all we need to know is an eight is bigger than a five. Um, and as we start to deliver these, we start to get that cadence. How many points of backlog items do we deliver? So, because our hours of effort is pretty gonna be, is really based on capacity. We're spending this effort but we're really trying to figure out how can we get more work done quicker, sooner with more value. So we'd like to use points. Uh, can I ask a question here? Only because I'm, I'm a little confused. Mm -hmm. the, the calculator is asking for hours. Is the um, track uh, team capacity in days? No, thanks Ricky, good question. The uh, sprint capacity planner can be in either. That's uh, your choice. We didn't put hours or days as a uh, label. So basically it's just a number that you can enter. So for your teams, if you want to use days, awesome. 
If your team wants to use hours, awesome too. Um, just be consistent. You know, each sprint should, all the sprints should either be in days or hours. Um, you'll get to the same number as long as you're consistent, right? It's just a matter of whether I'm dividing, you know, my days by number of hours or not. Um, for this workshop, uh, we did end up using, um, uh, we ended up, I think, what did I put in the first one? Yeah, we ended up using uh, fully available uh, days as you looked here. So we did days as entry here. And our our Scrum Adventures toolbox, it actually has a label of hours. So right. um, so you kind of have to do one little math in your head since they, uh, they don't match perfectly in that. We could have made our example here in hours to match it. Um, but either way, as long as you're consistent, I think you'll get that. So great question, Ricky. Any other questions before we send you guys to open breakout time? I guess just um, basically, if you're not scoring a lot of increments points from week to week, you've got a bigger problem. Either you don't have the right skills or um, you're not assessing the complexity of the work correctly or yada, 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 right? <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty. Uh, that's pretty good to uh, to know, Kathy. Because if your team is, you know, constantly working on interrupts and we're delivering very little increment, uh, this allows us to have visibility we might not have seen before. Mm -hmm. Right? You know, some stakeholders, executives, like, ah, those guys never get any features done. They're never getting the product advanced. You know, yeah, maybe because they're constantly working on bugs and our production system is just really poor and has a lot of holes. So even though they try to get things done, they're always working on bugs. This will let us see that. And then we can say, what do we want to do about that? Uh, maybe a, you know, a future sprint, we make an idea where, you know what, we're going to invest in improving our quality of our product. So mm -hmm. our increment for this sprint is like, let's just do quality improvement, handle some of those problems we have. And, uh, and then maybe going forward, we can start to build those new features. So you should get some visibility by using this. And one other question, um, is there a percentage of Kazan, I don't know if I'm saying it right, like, um, just, you know, self-improvement is critical because in the end, the customer is going to see it as well. But is there any rule of thumb on what percentage that should be or? Yeah, nice. Uh, yeah, I pronounce it Kaizen, um, just so you know how it's pronounced. And uh, no rule of thumb here. Uh, you know, I just kind of like that to be that open conversation. You know, are we investing in improvement? Um, if we're spending, you know, each and every sprint with 50% of Kaizen uh, versus our increment, that would probably seem kind of high. Um, but we want to look at that. What, what is going on? So we can have those open conversations, say, why are we investing so much in Kaizen? Are we a newly formed team and we just don't know how to work together? Uh, are our skills all over the place and we need to learn from each other? So we really want to do a lot of, uh, you know, maybe we want to do a lot of sharing or lunch and learns or you know, things to learn each other's skills. So we might at certain times. Um, so again, open conversations. Uh, no rule of thumb. I just like to see, you know, teams kind of do one or two changes each and every sprint. Experiment with one or two. If they experiment with a lot, for any of you that might have done marketing, you find when you do a lot of changes, you don't know what changed. You know, if I'm going to do 10 changes on something that I have, how do I know which one actually had a positive impact, which one had a negative? Mm -hmm, um, yeah. Yeah, just want to look at that. All right, anything else? Otherwise, let's send you to the breakout rooms and you guys can uh, uh, do this next scenario. So it's same teams, is that right? Yep, I'll put you on the same teams. A uh, couple people were not able to hang into the second hour. So let me take a look at that in the breakout rooms and uh, see if each team. So uh, Kathy, I'm going to move you to- uh, Oh no, no, keep me with Genevieve. <laughs> uh, Genevieve dropped, so that's why I'm going to move you because uh, right now you'd be a team by yourself. So I think you'd want to be with us. Oh, okay. So let's, uh, I'm going to move you to uh, to room three. You're going to be with Lisa and, and uh, Vipani. Okay, so I'm going to open these and and we're going to do that. Okay, breakout rooms are not going to automatically close. Okay. So we got that. So, oh, the yesterday's weather. So, uh, does it give us? Yes. Ah. And I think the next step was it yesterday's weather that we need to do? Or what's the capacity? This is what we got here.
So what's what's the next steps? It's, these are in now. Nice. So those are your yeah. No, that's great, Bernie. So those are your answers from the first activity. Uh, um, you know, basically uh, there were some boxes to enter on that first activity. If you want to put them in there, basically because you use the Scrum Ventures toolbox, you're able to figure out this is our capacity for each one of the sprints. 33, 32, 34, and 43.75 for the future sprint. That looks great. So back, it's to the right. It's back in that thing. Um, yeah, go to the right, yeah. That was kind of the fur, well, yeah, those answers were for the first, uh, first activity, but if you want to move forward now, Yes. Here's your new here's your new activity. Three five fifty for four nine. Okay. Uh, that was the script. Oh yes. Fifty. Five fifty. Okay. And then in this was and then the four twenty three, one two fifty nine. I'm looking at that right. You guys didn't know you were going to work so hard, did you? <laughs> well, that's what we, that's what you learn to get better. <laughs> uh, true. Hopefully, hopefully it's a fun way to learn. I try yep. to, always, I try to make them fun. No, no, it is. It is. It is. What? Interrupt eight? <laughs> yeah, that sounds more realistic, doesn't it? One or two doesn't sound so realistic. Eight, that probably sounds more realistic. Okay. So does it does this is this skew the total? I guess the error of the seven because of this one right here. Right, because you you look at it. Yep. Here, because n is four, interrupt seven, increment is seventy three. So the interesting thing about the increment is the increment is higher than any of the previous three sprints. But look at your capacity coming up for the future sprint. Your capacity Box. coming up is much larger than what we've had before. So, so yeah, mm -hmm. if we take what we've been able to deliver and now we have more capacity, uh, our increment should bump up too. Hmm. Okay. Okay, so what's the, what's the case and interrupt total velocity? Okay, uh, anything else? <laughs> You can put the answers on the mural if you desire, or you can just take a screenshot and put that up there if you desire to. I'll just do a screenshot. Nice. Okay. And the image is right there. All right. Yeah, I like that on mural. You can always just drag, drop. Mm -hmm. Have you used mural before, Bernie? No, this is a very new tool for me. So, yeah, yeah I'm a I'm a big fan just because of this infinite canvas and for training, and I'll do it for ideation and a lot of great things. That so I'm kind of a big fan of it. Yeah. Also, I think was it a couple of um, sessions ago? Someone else used Mural to do a presentation. I remember. Uh, mm -hmm. the, was that the? Uh, I think that was the guy who was the um, bassist, the, the one who. Like the acoustic bass or something? Oh, or yeah, yeah, yeah. That was uh, um, uh, we. Yeah, we. Right. We, yeah, we win, my my friend. That's right. He did uh, the quadrants, the four quadrants. Right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, he, he built his uh, presentation all on mural. Okay. So do we have anything else we need to report? Or I guess we could have probably put these notes. Well, that's, uh, that's everything to get your answer. If, uh, if you and Kate and Monet want to... Uh, Go back and look at the sprint capacity planner. You can play a little what if. Okay. Um, so if you wanted to like flip back, maybe a Kate or Manet want to do a what if and say, hey, what if, you know, one of these things happen? What might, uh, what might I predict and see if that comes out? So if anybody wants to shout that out, that's one thing you guys can try. Do that with some time remaining. Yeah. Okay. So uh, what, what, so anyone else? Uh, so what if there was a, uh, what if the one at the sprint before even that one had a uh, really dramatic uh, interrupt? In other words, it was almost just nothing but production problems. So it tripled the number of uh, 
Just thinking. Sure. Instead of five, it'd yeah, be 15. I try that too. That's more realistic in like <laughs> my world. Like there's more interrupt. There's more interrupt more often than not. Mm -hmm. So I want to see how, how much that affects the capacity for. Right. Yeah. No, nice. Mm -hmm. And you, you probably delivered less increment if that was your case too. It's like, oh, we had right. all this, we had to spend all this increment. So, so maybe, and it's, all right. So what, so what happened here? So Bernie just added more interrupt. What did you see happen to the um, estimate? It didn't change. <laughs> interrupt uh, went up. The right. interrupt estimate went up. Right. But our increment is the same. Why is the capacity the same? Yeah, uh, the capacity, mm -hmm. like it was the same. It did, the capacity didn't change. Because the, the capacity is just um, how many hours we're going to be able to work. Um, but that was changing our history. Right. Yeah, exactly right in the capacity. Okay. Yeah, capacity is your number of hours the team is available based on okay. their, allocate, uh, their availability with their allocation. So that's the same there. In this case, you just said, hey, you know, three sprints ago, that sprint before even last one, we had a lot of interrupts points. Um, so that implies going forward, we need to uh, predict, we need to leave a buffer for 11 increment, 11 interrupt points, uh, about four Kaizen and our increment is 73. We didn't change our increment because we still delivered, uh, delivered those points in those last three sprints. How about this for a what if? What if we look at now this sprint on capacity? So if we looked at our three prior sprints, we had 33, 32, and 34. What if, uh, you know, hey, you know what, that new person we were going to hire, they ended up not joining. So we're back to about 33. So change that to 33, click next, add points, and then click uh, calculate your velocity again too. And now you see your increment comes back down. Mm -hmm. So now you come back down to 55 because our capacity is pretty consistent across those uh, three prior sprints in the one future. So now we're able to look across and see how much have we delivered. So our increment feels like it kind of slides in there a little bit different. I like it when you said, basically, this is what the team can actually use to do the calculation. So if the product owner says, well, we need to do this. And you say, well, this is all that we have for um, increments, for points. And then mm -hmm. what is your, your most valuable item? So it could be like a bargaining type of tool for the team. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure we all agree, right? And an interesting thing is, uh, let's play. Uh, let's play that. What if? Let's say, let's go to that sprint before last one, and where you have the interrupt points of two. Let's mm -hmm. say that was a twenty. Okay. And let's say our fifty-nine, our increment. You know what? We wanted to do fifty-nine, but we had all those twenty. So instead of fifty-nine, we ended up doing twenty-five. Let's just say our increment was like really impacted. So go ahead, click calculate again. And you see the adjustment here. So now our increment come, came down and our interrupt went way up. Um, and this is a great discussion to have because you're gonna talk with your, your product owners and you're gonna say, why are we spending so much time in interrupt? Why, why so many bugs? That's a huge percentage. You know, it's like 20% of what we're delivering. We're spending so much time doing things that I don't want built, right? I wanna build more product. I don't wanna deal with all these interrupts. Great product owner. We've been talking to you a lot about trying to fix this technical debt and these problems. We haven't been invested in that. We need your okay for us to invest and fix those problems so we can get that interrupt down. So these are conversations we can now have and that can change the backlog. Oh yeah, you guys keep putting those things in the backlog. Um, all right, all right, maybe we should move them up. Let's take care of that. Now we have a return on that investment. So, mm -hmm. so those can be kind of fun conversations to have. You guys good here? I'm going to check on one other room, give you guys like maybe another minute or two, see if everybody else wants to come back. Yeah, that was helpful. Thank you. Awesome. If you want to play some other what ifs, go for it. Uh, otherwise, I'll pull you guys back in a, a minute or two. Okay. Pleasure meeting both of you. Um, what are your names again? Sorry. Uh, my name is Vapani. <laughs> okay. Hi. And, Lee. and she did all the driving. And okay. I <laughs> okay. 
All right. Well, I know in Zoom you can return at any time, but they didn't call us back, right? I know he said. Oh, yeah. oh sure. Sherman's sure. sure. here to see how we're doing. Oh, okay. So yeah, we did. I was, have, gonna make, I was gonna make sure you guys are good. You're okay. Yeah, we had one question. We understand the points of the increment the way you described it, mm -hmm. but we're trying to understand. We get that we have 350 capacity in hours, and we can do work uh, for an increment of 78 points. Well, we do we lose them? I'm here. What we don't understand is how does seven points of interrupt or four points of kaizen relate to how we would apply the interrupt we could um, buffer we could handle or the Kaizen that we could put into place for people's growth. We don't know how to apply that because that points don't map to ours. Okay, yeah, no, great. Because our backlog um, should be filled with, with uh, items that are estimated in points, right? So when we're looking at all these items in our backlog, they all have an estimate, they have an estimate of points. This particular thing mm -hmm. we want to build is three points. This other thing we want to build is eight points. And if we created a Kaizen, for example, which is like, hey, as a team, we want to figure out, um, we want to get together and figure out more creative retrospectives. So we're going to invest in a way of making sure our retrospectives are more valuable. So we're, we, just, we estimated that and we came up with, hey, that's a three-point uh, that's a three-point effort for us to come up with a more creative Kaizen. And maybe we had another backlog item of a Kaizen where we want to reschedule the time we do our daily scrum. The time we're doing our daily scrum is not working for everybody. Some people have conflicts. So that's a Kaizen just to figure out what's the time we can all do a daily scrum. So maybe we got two backlog items we're pulling in. They equal four points. So those are things we pull into our next sprint. You know, we, we created a, a room to pull four points of Kaizen in. Um, interrupt is basically truly a buffer, right? We didn't pull that in, but we want to allow for about seven points of interrupt that can happen throughout the next sprint. And we can then track that and say, hey, if we're starting to get more than seven points, no, we don't have room for that. We can't deliver 78 points of increment if more than seven points of interrupt happen in the sprint. So how, so if we have capacity of 350, it's saying according to this calculator that we have bandwidth for 78 points of increment, seven points of interrupt buffer and four points of Kaizam. But I still, it's hard to relate that to the hours. Um, and I know Sprint doesn't really do that, but, um, or Scrum. Right, well, that's where, uh, that's where this tool kind of brings it together because if our capacity changes, um, then what we can deliver next sprint, our target will change. So capacity is truly just how much available and what allocation are they? So if you changed, um, who's uh, sharing their screen? Which one of you? I'm sharing it. Okay, so Vipani, if you go to now this sprint in the capacity column, let's play a what if. So instead of 350, right? So basically we look here, you know, we thought we were gonna hire a new person that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. So let's go back down to, you know. 280. 280. 280. So let's put 280. Click next, add points uh, to get you into the second column. And then you can click calculate. Yeah, you got to change calculate. And you'll see now our increment drops. Mm -hmm. we, have, we have less hours available as a team. So, so we, we can deliver less. So the interrupt and the increment went down. The Kaizen stayed at four, I thought. Unless yeah, I, it stayed at four because it probably was uh, too small of a percentage to matter. You know, mm. four points over that large volume, you know, probably changed from maybe a 4.4 .4 to a 4.1. Uh, so if we do rounding, we're probably still at a four. Yeah. So this, this software is free, the Sprint Capacity Planner? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, that's now, why uh, we want what to about, that. What about the Mural app? I know that you use that, and I'm still trying to find out more about that app. Yeah, Mural app is a, uh, um, a separate tool that I use. We don't own that one. So I love Mural. Um, they do have, a, I think, a free version of it. I have the paid version here. Is it Mural.co is the website? It's Mural.co. Okay. Yeah, Mural okay. All right, I'm going to jump back and close the breakout rooms and pull everybody Yeah, back. thank you. All right, you guys Thanks. did great. Some of you are back here and I'm closing the breakout rooms to bring the rest of you all back. So let's get everybody back in here. Okay, awesome job. 
All right, let's do uh let's do a what you uh what you learned here. What did what did you guys learn? And then maybe we'll do just a just a small moment of a group lean coffee. But what did you learn? Something you guys can use? Give us uh give Griffin and I some feedback. I can go. I'm gonna start to use Kaizen um, and dedicate story points for that. So I find it pretty pretty interesting thing. Awesome. Thanks, okay. Tatiana. Thank you. Who wants to add on that? Kathy, you're on mute. Oh, I I was just going to say, I think metrics are always great. I think, as um, Sherman was saying, for visibility, for um, promoting confidence and clarity, I think as long as you don't let the tools or metrics take over, you know, team building is, is still critical. But I think, um, I know it's a proven methodology, and I learned a little bit about these tools. So thank you. Awesome. Yeah, and I'll, and I'll add because we we talked about it in group two is this is the, I, I can see the benefits of this, especially if it's a young team or an expanding team or, you know, uh, somebody that's new to Scrum or, you know, as a product owner to really understand um, and keep track of where they can be and where they're falling short or, you know, they're... Uh, overextending themselves over um, or under um, performing in their group. So, I mean, I can see that it's like, and it's based on, on their past sprints. And so when they're doing their check-ins, uh, their daily check-ins um, that they go, okay, where are we? Are we in line? Are we behind? Who needs help? Do we need to cross train? You know, have we spent enough on X, Y, and Z um, to, fulfill our capacity. Thanks, Ricky. Anyone else want to share? I just have another quick question. Um, I know you talked about a scribe and the mural as a spec or as a, you know, an agenda, right? And then using the Kodomi. Um, who typically would make sure they have these metrics visible? Is it the product owner, the a scribe, who, what role is doing all this, you know, data behind the scenes? No, that's great. No, I like the whole Scrum team to make uh, to make the commitment to make this visible to other teams in the organization. So our Scrum team consisting of our product owner, our Scrum master, and our developers. So okay. this is something for the whole Scrum team to have visibility because they're responsible for delivering increments of the product each and every sprint. Mm-hmm. Um, this uh, mostly will allow the developers, because they're the producers of the product, to have that confidence that what they're committing to deliver and build, that they can go and deliver and build those. Yeah, great question. All right, I'm going to do a, a, a one or two more shares here, and we're going to jump into uh, for our last uh, half hour here, a little bit of lean coffee. Let's get uh, some relaxing and open time here. Uh, so I want to let you guys know on the board, if you uh, did bounce around the mural, uh, great. If you didn't, uh, we have a course materials section. If you're using the outline, you can just click on that. Uh, the PowerPoint that I went through is here available. You're welcome to download that as a PDF. So if that helps guide you and give you some examples, awesome, take that. If you didn't get a chance to uh, join any of the tools and you were uh, somebody else was doing that on your, on your behalf on your team, um, the Sprint Capacity Planner, you can uh, click on that, click the open or double click it. That'll take you to the um, URL for that. And the Scrum Adventures Toolbox, you'll just find that on your phone. I did hyperlink both of those, but of course, if you do those from your computer, you won't be able to install it that way. Um, but it would take you to those respective apps. If you happen to join Mural from your phone, you can, of course, click that and it would actually open up your, your app store so you can download them. Um, but it's called Scrum Adventures Toolbox. So I want to let you guys know that. 